Uh, very good morning to everyone. Uh, today is the third lesson, and today is quite uh, exciting for me. Um, uh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, what I was uh, going to say is that uh, today we're going to look at uh, numbers, and uh, and I'm glad that uh, you all enjoy mathematics, enjoy numbers. Um, we are going to get, um, we are going to handle the entire number system as one big chunk, all right? We're not going to go like one, two, three, four, you know, the boring way. We're going to look at uh, squares until inf infinity, uh, roots until infinity, cubes until infinity, all right? So, we, so it's going to be a bit of a mind flip if you can think about it that way, all right? So before I get into uh, today's lesson, I wanna just kind of recap on the previous lesson and the assignment, okay? Because what we did in the first two lessons is very, very fundamental, very, very basic, which every programming language will require you to uh, understand, right? Uh, can you enable sharing, please? Because I'm not able to share my screen. Ah, thank you. Okay. So I have um, lesson two here. All right. Before I get into the actual uh, uh, assignment, I just want to do a recap, okay? So we need to start thinking of programming as a process. Process means step one, what to do, step two, what to do, step three, what to do, and eventually what we get is an output. So with a, with a fixed input, we will get an output, all right? And what we do in the steps exactly is in step one, step two, step three, these are called uh, uh, conditions or logical conditions, all right? Uh, and these conditions needs to have an expression, you know, like why, why is an expression? That means you are actually expressing the, the condition of why it should be true or false, you know? So like that, so we have to go through like a waterfall method in order to find uh, the best, uh, possible outcome for given the uh, inputs, all right? So for that, we have uh, what we call logical expressions, which is called if statements. It's simply English. If the statement is the condition, if the statement is true, then it will continue to the next, to the next, to the next. So we are actually starting on our path to teach the computer to make a decision, all right? So that is the basic understanding and most languages uh, have to have this sort of logical expression. And from here, it's when it becomes more and more intelligent, all right? So we have uh, if statement, and then if you have multiple conditions, um, it will continue on. That means the top will execute first. If it's, if it's, if it's not true, then it'll go to the next one and then the next. So you can stack as many else if as possible. And then it's always good practice to have an else at the end, which is the catch all situation, all right? Sometimes you may want to not have a catch all, it's fine as long as you know that your program doesn't, your program considers all possibilities, all right? So you can stack as many else if as possible. If you have done the assignment, you will learn that it will only execute once. That means if any of the statements is true, it will execute that and then it will continue. It will, it will exit the entire if statement. Okay. So, so I have created a simple example here where we are asking for a number. And if the number that you have given is five, it will check whether it's less than four. So you can see that this is what we call as a statement, 
All right. This is a statement. You can see that guess is now going to contain the value five and it will check whether five is less than or equal to four. If a five is less than to equal to four, then it will print low number. But in this case, it printed lucky number because guess is greater than four and less than eight, less than or equal to eight. So that's how we get, that's how it executes this line right here and prints out to the screen, as you can see, lucky number. All right, so that's, so you can see that it can get more complex with more uh, else statements uh, stacked together. So you can see inside the statement, these are called operators. The greater than equal sign is called operators. So you have math operators, you have conditional operators, you have logical operators. These are all helping you to make that decision, whether true or whether false. So these statements actually have to evaluate to a true false value. So if it evaluates to a true false value, then it uh, executes that particular code uh, block. All right. So you can see that there is a colon here. And inside that colon, you have uh, a code block, print, print uh, statement, two print statements. Remember, I told you that it should be tabbed in so that it comes under this if statement. If it's uh, if it's if it's on the same line, then it won't it won't execute in here. And 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 Python is very particular about tabbing, okay? Because most other languages have curly braces or some sort of string, but in Python we use tabs, okay? So that's how we uh, generate this uh, if else statement. So now uh, we are you can see that. Uh, uh, these are just some examples that I've given you. For example, the plus operator. So three plus two, we get five, all right? So you can see that this is how it evaluates the actual five answer by having a plus. This is very simple, right? But then there are other things like uh, uh, A plus equal B. So I've put B as two, so it is incremented um, so if I so it, I need to I need to um, I need to execute this, all right, and then I need to execute this. So you can see that a is actually three, and then it incremented. Um, I didn't have to type write it like you know like a equal to a plus b. I can do it in short form like this: a plus equals b. That means I'm adding a value to b. All right, but you can see this one is actually an incrementer. That means if I click again, it will go to seven, it will go to uh, nine, and it will go to, you know, it'll just keep incrementing each time I execute because it writes the value back to A. So now A is actually 11. You see, I'm printing A here. So A has now taken a new value and then plus B means adding another two. So it'll just keep incrementing. So these are uh, incrementers and decrementers. All right, so this is the basics of Python. All right, for in terms of if else statements, then we are going to look at uh, loops. Loops, we will play with loops today. Okay, I introduced loops uh, last week so that you can kind of have an idea of how the syntax looks. Okay, so it's very, very simple. It's exactly like English, but pseudo English. So it has got a for to it in front of it. That means it's a for loop. If it's got a while, it's a while loop. If it usually we don't have a do loop because the opposite of a while loop is a do loop. What I mean by opposite is that uh, the while loop also takes in a condition. All right. So the the it, the while loop will will only execute if the condition is true, but the do loop will do first and then check the condition. So it's just a matter of how you rearrange the while loop. You can do while and do together. All right. So we will talk about the loops in the in today's lesson, all right? So I just wanted you to kind of like play around with uh, numbers. So this is another Python function called range. You know, like how you want to go uh, 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 to the range, you right? You 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 can actually specify uh, how many numbers you want uh, in the range, and it will automatically create an array of zero to ninety nine. All right. So 
That's why in some cases you will see I put one as the start number in front. Like here, I can actually put uh, uh, the start condition, all right? And then I can say plus one because 100, it actually refers to zero to 99. If you, if you look at it, uh, computers always start counting from zero, okay? Uh, it's, just, it's just the way, way it is, all right? And so in order for us to get one to 100, we have to do like this. That means you have to put one in front, that means start from one all the way to 99 plus one. So we get one to 100, right? So that's, uh, that's uh, uh, just, just giving you a heads up on, on range. Now, when, I, when, I, uh, when we create a string, string is also an array. So you can see that when you execute this, uh, it'll actually print out each line. So print means it prints out a single line and then followed by the next, followed by the next, all right? So here, thanks to a student, um, your name is, uh, okay, I, I don't expect you to send me the, the, the answers to the assignment, but uh, Sasha, thank you very much. Uh, you did the assignment in like, uh, 20 minutes, oh no, you, you, you did the assignment even before the class finished, oh, okay. So last week, so uh, must be easy for you. So this is Shasha's code, thank you very much, Sasha. And um, so I hope uh, you can actually look at the code here and understand what is happening. Now, it's important to read other people's code so that um, you can understand what is working. And, and this code is actually very well written, very simple, very to the point. Uh, the variable names are exactly what its values are carrying. All right. So he's, uh, Sasha has even got a title. Uh, you have, so it's now asking for an input. Okay. Uh, so uh, you have, uh, uh, which is the total of A plus B. All right, so it's going to print you have so much of money and uh, the value of one carrot is 70 cents and the value of tomatoes is 50 cents. And then it's going to ask you uh, input, which is going to ask from the screen. It's going to ask you how many uh, tomatoes do you want? Or, and then it's going to ask you how many carrots do you want? So you can see this is when you say input, that means it's asking for an input. That means it's going to pop up a little window for you to type in the value, okay? And then when you type in the value, whatever value you type in, it converts it into an integer. This is a very good practice, all right? And because we are going to do a mathematical operation, we got to make sure that the values are integers or floats or any form of number, correct? So integer is good because we can't buy half a tomato or three quarter carrot, right? So we consider uh, the input to be an integer. So once the integers are keyed in, it's saved in this variable called T for the number of tomatoes and C in the number of carrots. Then from there, we calculate the total by T times the price of a tomato plus the number of carrots times the price of a carrot. So that will give us the total value. And then what we are doing, what Sasha is doing here, which is also a very good practice, which I did not uh, expect, it's bringing it down to the second um, uh, decimal place to make sure that we do not have uh, a very long, uh, uh, what is that, uh, floating number, okay? This is something that you need to understand at some point, uh, uh, that uh, the actually, actually, if you talk about very, very long um, uh, numbers in, in, in computers, computers are actually inaccurate, okay? Because if you divide uh, one by three, you get uh, 0 0.33333 and keep going on. So if you say uh, one over three plus one over three plus one over three, it's actually one, right? But the computer will think it's 0 0.9999999, right? It doesn't know how to round up. So that is why it is good to always round up because us human beings know that one third plus one third plus one third is one, right? So that's why we need to additionally do some uh, work to rectify this uh, error in, in, in computers. 
So use the round function in Python to round up and the two specifies the number of decimal places that you want to round up to. Okay, so if it's 9999, it will automatically become one. All right, so now another uh, good practice is very descriptive, another print statement to print the total and then calculating the balance. So that means again, A plus B minus the total, round up the balance and then print out the balance. All right, so. Uh, okay, so you can just run it. Okay, so you can see that the total was two ringgit ninety cents. Okay, and then your balance is two ringgit ten cents. So that's how. You see how um, we have actually used um, uh, uh, yeah. So so um, so basically, this is the assignment. All right. So I hope uh, all of you managed to do it. Let me just. I can't seem to see the. Chat. A list of nomenclatures to help us to understand would be exhaustive, might help. Yes, at some point I will share some cheat sheets. I hope that's what you're asking for, uh, Radha. Uh, give you a cheat sheet to help you with. Uh, uh, you know, finding uh, the kind of uh, uh, whatever that's that you want to look for in, in Python, you know, everything has got a little bit of a twist in terms of the naming convention. All right. So without wasting any more time, uh, let's go to lesson number three. Lesson number three is really, really exciting because um, uh, because you're going to play with numbers, all right? So, um, uh, um, so let's let's begin, okay? So in uh, Python, uh, to to find the power of or the if you put two, it's the square, all right? If you put zero point five, it's the root. If you put three, it's the cube. Okay, so like that, you can see now you can do until infinite, right? But I before I, I, I jump into uh, this stuff here, uh, I want you to uh, create a simple loop, right? Like how we've done before. Uh, we've created apple, banana, a cherry, and then I want to print this out. So this is a for loop and this is a while loop. We're going to play with loops right now because we want to loop until... Uh, a specific number, and then I want you to see the patterns of how numbers actually uh, behave. Okay, how did it decide to 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 pick three? You see, because here this this uh, this value t and c, uh, just answering Patmini's question, this t and c is actually an input. So if I run it, so it's asking me. You see, how many tomatoes do you want? So I can put five, right? Then I enter. Then how many carrots do you want? Four, enter. Then it calculates and then it says I've overdrawn by 30 cents. So that's how, uh, and, and there is still a balance. So you can see the balance is calculated by A plus B, which is the amount of money you have. Uh, and uh, uh, total is the total calculated and get the balance, all right? So that's how uh, it's done. It's quite, quite uh, intuitive, all right? So now, uh, don't look at the, at the code for now, all right? Okay, just uh, click and run this. 
Okay, so I've created a simple, simple table here, uh, or the one times table, the two times table, three times table, four times table, five times table, right? So you can see, uh, you can just change this number to 12, all right, and hit it again, you will get the 12 time table, all right? So I think one of the most important things or one of the most difficult things that you ever have to do in maths in your entire life is to memorize the, uh, the 12 time table. The only reason I suggest this is because it makes mathematics a little bit more easier. It makes mathematics a little bit more fun. Okay, so, so that is why I stress on uh, just learning the 12 time tables somehow by hook or crook, you know, just memorize the 12 time table, uh, you will be, your mathematics will be uh, a joyful experience. It won't be a, a, a mundane, it won't be drudgery. This is the only, probably the only hardest thing you probably have to do in, in your entire mathematical uh, learning process. Okay, so now, in order to help you with this process, in order to make it easier for you, I have done a little program. You can see that you can also read the programs that I've written, okay? It's, uh, it's, it's basically using loops and print statements and so on and so forth, all right? I will come back and explain that later. But for now, I just want you to just run it. And what I have done is I have spaced out the numbers based on the value. That means if it's zero, it's zero space. If it's one, I put it one space away from the answer. So I put two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero, one, two, you know, so it, you can see that there is some sort of repetition in the pattern for the one time table, right? And this is the last digit, not the, not the first digit, okay? The, the, the SA, okay? Uh, the unit. Uh, the base unit, all right? So I'm just made, push, pushed it, uh, the number of spaces behind. Now, when you do for the second, uh, uh, the second timetable or the, the two timetable, you find that there is a pattern starting to form. There is two, four, six, eight, uh, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. It just keeps going two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, all right? Now I'm going to do a flip, all right? I'm going to go to eight. Eight is the or reverse, 862, 862, 862, right? So you can see that nine is the reverse of one. So you can see that one and nine has got a pattern that they follow, but in the reverse, all right? And the same is now for three and seven is a bit uh, different, but the same, I show you. For three, it's 369, 258, 147036. But if you look at uh, seven is 147258369, it's the same, but in the reverse. Okay, only that the numbers jump a little bit. Okay, so you can see that one and nine, two and eight, three and seven, four and six is going to be the opposites of each other. All right, so this will already tell you, if you keep going on to whatever number you want to do, 11, 12, you can see the numbers start to repeat. Now, why do we learn mathematics in this way? It actually helps with your creativity because you need to start seeing patterns in numbers because there is a pattern. There is a pattern in every, uh, uh, um, what you can say, uh, algorithm, all right? So an algorithm is, so this, this uh, power, uh, this timetable is actually an algorithm. That means if I give it a value, an input, it'll give me an output, right? So this, every algorithm, mathematical algorithm has got patterns. And if you learn mathematics from a pattern perspective, your creativity will skyrocket. You know why? Because I just taught you until 10 or nine, you can already learn from uh, what is going to happen to 10, what is going to happen to 11, and 12, and 13, and 14, and 15, and whatever. So you are see, you see, we just by learning the 12 timetable, you are already knocking on the doors of inf infinity. All right. This is very, very important when you learn 
mathematics. All right, we don't pay enough attention to this uh, when we teach uh, students. We must teach them how to look at the patterns because when you see a pattern, this pattern is going to be common or it's going to be applicable to the entire number system. So we've learned the entire number system just by going from 0 to 12 or 1 to 12. So that's very, very important. Okay. So, uh, so this is the 12 time table. So I've added some color. I've added some color to indicate. Now you can see that the times will actually go in a diagonal. You can see the red. If you focus your mind on the, focus your eyes on the red, you can see it's going on a diagonal. Okay. Then you can see the whatever that is ending with a, with a whatever that's ending as a multiple of nine. Okay, is a blue. All right, so you can see that the blues always add up to nine. That means uh, eight plus one, nine, two, two plus seven, nine, three point six, nine, 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 and it just keeps repeating, repeating that way. All right, so we're gonna play with some numbers in a in a, in a while. So I just want you to uh, focus on these little things that uh, that make it stand out. All right. And um, so you can see that I've, I've used the for loop and then I've got a start value here uh, that uh, allows me to, uh, you know, I can put a very large number and it will generate the, the table for me. But of course, uh, uh, I don't have to do it now. You can do it on your own, all right? So I just added some colors and uh, it's the same table. And I've pasted out the, the 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 last digits, the the answer of the answers last digit, and you can see the pattern already recurring. All right. So uh, so this is uh, this is uh, uh, an introduction to to uh, infinity. You can you can think of it uh, that way. All right. So now uh, this is the timetable. So it's important for us to look at the pattern of the timetables. So once you can see that pattern, you will you'll find that numbers are actually not as complex as they seem to be. All right. Of course, for a for a naked eye, it would seem uh, complex, but uh, uh, in most cases, uh, uh, you will start to uh, form an affinity to numbers. All right. That's the whole idea of mathematics. Now. Okay, I'm going to close this. So this is another, now I'm going to dive into the for loop because it's, it's a bit more uh, easier to understand. So again, um, I have, um, so I have already defined X here, all right? Because uh, I've already defined X up here and you can see that, um, that I have already run this. So let me just click here. Ah, you see it's already run. So if it's got a number, that means it's already run. All right, so I've already set X to this. I've already set X to 12. Now I don't have to specify X again. So X is already taking the value of 12 plus one. Now you know why I'm doing one, 12 plus one, because it's going to go from zero to 11 if I don't put this. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start off with an odd number one, right? And then I'm going to go uh, uh, in a, I'm going to print out all the odd numbers uh, in, um, uh, in, in, in I, okay? So I'm going to uh, start from one, okay? If odd is one, one, it'll print just one, all right? And then uh, if, uh, if I is uh, two, it's going to print one plus three because you can see that uh, uh, when it's two, it's going to be two plus, uh, when, it going to, it's, when it's going to be one, it's going to be one plus two equal uh, three, right? So it's going to, going to going to increment that way, all right? So what, what, what I, what I, why I'm doing this is I want to show you the pattern, okay? I want to show you the pattern that one power of two is actually one, okay? So we got one, then two to the power of two is actually four, which is actually made up of one plus three. So you can see now that the next one is the same thing, is plus five. So that means the, we need to know what are odd numbers, all right? Even numbers are the ones in between. So you can just keep adding uh, the next uh, uh, odd number. So if it's four, so it is, uh, you take three times two, uh, which is uh, plus one, seven, added to the previous, you will get the, the square of four. 
All right, so you can see that now I have spaced it out. This line right here is printing it out like this. So I can go up to infinity and it'll work. So immediately you can see that there is a pattern here. And this is what I want to teach you guys to kind of fixate your mind to because it is impossible for us to go and calculate, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, what I mean is it's, it's so that you will understand how the, 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 the power of uh, uh, function actually works. Now, to give you a little bit of a, of a heads up, the computer actually uses this sort of method whenever you do the power. Okay, so the computer is actually written, they've actually written an algorithm. So if let's say you, you wanted to create your own computer, you need to create these sort of algorithms. That means you need to find a pattern of how the numbers work and write a pattern. So basically the, the, the origins of the computer actually implements the power of like this. It uses a loop and it multiplies the, the previous number and generates the answer. But what, what we don't see is all of this in the background, all right? We only see the answer. When you do the, the power of, uh, you will only see the, the, the end result, but you don't see the in-between. So, so that is why it, we need to see how these, these patterns are created, right? Uh, and, and then we can convert that into an algorithm. You understand what I'm saying? So if I wanted to write an algorithm, first I will look at what is the pattern uh, of, of these numbers and how they occur. And then I recreate that as a uh, process. So, so you can say the power of is a process that finds the value of two numbers, all right? Uh, the, the power of two numbers, all right? So, so the same thing can be applied for three, four, five, six, seven, a power of, and, and, and so on and so forth. Not the same pattern, but it, there is a pattern is what I'm trying to say. I can't cover everything because three is a little bit different, but um, so, so uh, yeah, so, but I try to do three. Uh, hopefully it, it, it kind of works out. Three gets a bit more complex, okay? Three gets a bit more complex, but I don't want to frighten you. So um, let's plot it, okay? So it's very, very, very simple uh, introduction to Python plotting, okay? It's a lot of fun. I think in lesson number six, we will be doing more of this, but it's just one line of code that I'm introducing, which is called uh, math, math, math as in MATLAB, math, Plot library dot pyplot as plt. So uh, this is how we import um, um, import. I think there may be an error if I run it, but let me try. Oh no! So uh, so there's no error because sometimes it, I may need to install matplotlib library, but it's already there, so I can just click on it. So what I have done is I have created um, an x value which is going to go from zero to 19, you can see the range is 20. So it's going to go from zero to 19. And then my Y value is nothing but the, uh, see the range, uh, it's also, uh, actually I can actually uh, uh, just put it X squared, but you can see that Y is going to go from zero to 20, just like X, but I'm going to multiply Y uh, with the power of two. So it's going to be the, the power of, uh, uh, we can actually uh, print uh, the value of y. You can see if I did just this and hit run, you can see that the value of y is actually the power of, that means 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and until uh, 19, right? So, so you can see when we plot it, it's going to be what is known as a uh, quadratic or a, a parabolic, semi-parabolic equation. So it's no longer a straight line. So if it's, a, if it's a, not a straight line, we call it a non-linear equation. Okay, I'm slowly introducing these topics because the world is non-linear. Nothing is a straight line, you know? Um, the world is a circle, the orbit is a circle, everything is in a circle. We think we are going in a straight line, but actually we are going in a circle. So if you keep going on that straight line, you come back to where you were before. So, so this is why uh, we need to be comfortable with uh, be, uh, being able to understand what is non-linear. So in the, when you take it to one power up, let's say uh, uh, y to the x squared, you will find that the line will start to curve. If it was, uh, uh, you, you can even plot another line that says 
uh, x equal to y and it'll be a straight line, right? So you already kind of know that, right? So now uh, let's look at a cube, okay? So, so why I wanted you to look at this is because you can see that uh, it is uh, starting to exponentially, uh, it's starting to increase, not ex exponentially, but starting to increase with the power of two, all right? So uh, it increases much faster. It starts off very slow. It's slow to start, but then it gets bigger as, uh, as the numbers get further away from zero, all right? So we can actually uh, plot this from uh, minus 20, minus 20 to minus 20 and minus 20 to that. We can even plot it and see the whole. Um, so you can see that it is uh, uh, a beautiful uh, parabolic uh, 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 curve, all right? So before zero, it is also positive. After zero is also positive because of the power. Two negatives create a positive. So this is how we, we envision. So you see, um, we, we, we learned about uh, power here, right, as a number. Here we are looking at it visually, all right? So this is the learning process that I want you all to have. That means when you have an equation, look at it from a graphical point of view, then, you can actually see the pattern even more clearly. So, so this is also, plotting is also another way of learning how to understand mathematics. So you, you, some people are very visual, right? Some people are very mathematical. Either way, there is a pattern, all right? So that is why plotting and uh, looking at patterns is a very, very helpful way of understanding mathematics, okay? Now, uh, let's look at... Um, uh, the cube, all right? Any questions so far? No, right? Okay. So all you have to do again is just click on this button and it should generate um, some, okay, it's generated everything, uh, but I haven't printed it out. So let me just print out the first two lines, okay? So you can see now the numbers are going to increase much faster, all right? From one, you're going to go to eight, and then 27, 64, 125, uh, 216, 343, 512. Okay, I, I know you don't see the pattern, right? You don't see a pattern. It's difficult to see without actually writing uh, some code. So let's look at the third line, okay? When you look at the third line, this is getting a bit, um, uh, scarier, uh, even more scarier than the, the previous line, but bear with me. I'm taking the difference between uh, these two numbers. I'm taking eight and one, eight minus one, I'm getting seven. 12, uh, 27 minus eight, I'm getting 19. 64 minus 27 is 34. So you can see how, where I'm going with this. All right, then we'll take the fourth line. The fourth line suddenly starts to look familiar. Now I take the difference between uh, seven and one, I get six. I take the difference between 19 and seven, I get 12. Then I take the difference between 37 and 39, uh, 19, I get 18. So you can see now these numbers start to form a pattern. All right. And then if I went on further to take the difference again, you'll find that it's all incrementing by six, 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 six. This is specifically for the three times table, all right? So this is another pattern. So you can see there are different algorithms written for different uh, power series, all right? So they all have a unique pattern and you can play with this uh, as much as you want. You can, you can copy the code, you can modify these values and you can see here I'm doing the power three. So you can actually try it out for four, five, six, so like that, what I'm trying to say is that every number system has got a pattern, okay? So if you all are agreeable to this, uh, then let's plot the, the, all the three, the three lines together, okay? I'm going to do a plot like this, okay? So you can see that um, this is the, see when you say R dash dash, it says red color with dashes, uh, G as in green, 
with a triangle and uh, B, not BS, uh, B is blue and S is for squares. So you can see that the, they all have a different pattern. Okay, if we can go, uh, we can go, um, uh, let's say, um, I, I can't do too many numbers. Uh, so what I will do is I will do negative here. This is uh, to the power of four, this is the power of three, uh, range 0 0.2, sorry, should be five. Okay, that makes it a float number. So you can see that this is a small curve, and then you can see that the green, um, uh, is actually changing its its uh, um, its uh, uh, it, it's it's actually turning. Okay, it's 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 going this way and then it's turning that way. So it's actually starting off negative because of the of the cube because of the cube the negative sign is maintained. So it is actually starting off negative and then becoming positive. So there is a change in direction from a negative to a positive. Right. So here, I mean, not, uh, not the, the, sorry, the, the gra gradient is always positive, but the Y value is changing from negative to positive. So you can see that the Q, right, uh, behaves a little bit differently from the, uh, the blue, remember, is the X squared, which is uh, this one right here, okay? Because the numbers are incrementing quite fast up here is why it's limited. Okay, so we can actually change the size and make it uh, much bigger plot size. You can actually make it bigger, but you can see that uh, for um, uh, x uh, x to the power of four, it forms like a like a bar tab, but it's different in terms of uh, it's not. Uh, uh, no, it is. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, uh, sorry, it's it's a bar tab, but it's just that it's starting off. Uh, further up, so maybe I should do four because it's ending at four, so it should start at four. Uh, no, sorry, it should be 4.8 to be exact. Yeah, so now the left side and the right side, you can see it, it's uh, symmetric. Okay, so 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 uh, very quickly, uh, you can understand that each time there's an increase in power, it's going to turn. All right. So the more turns it has, uh, the more complex the equation becomes. That means it can go to power four, five, six, seven, eight. In machine learning, we go up to the power of uh, uh, some hundred and fifty thousand. You know, because that's how many. That's how complex the solution is when you talk about machine learning. So this is very, very basic. This is what we can see and visualize. If I give you an equation with the power of 100 over 1000, you cannot visualize it. So you see, you see now how uh, we are now operating in, a, in, an, in, an, in an environment where we cannot visualize. We cannot visualize the, the complexity that, of the real world. So that is why the learning is uh, important for us to, to understand these concepts uh, visually, all right? So, so this is uh, this is the 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 objective of of, of uh, today's class is to learn about of course for loops to learn about numbers and then to learn about how to plot uh, uh, the equation. Okay, so uh, it's a very very easy uh, tool. I, I really love uh, Python. It it takes away all the headache of. Um, of uh, trying to uh, uh, plot it. In the sixth lesson, okay, I will show you how to draw the axes, uh, how to uh, give it annotation, how to put a title, you know, get into more involved in making your chart more beautiful, making it bigger, uh, high, giving it different types of uh, markers and so on and so forth, colors and so on and so forth. So this is a very, very crude introduction to plotting because the only purpose I, I do this is because I want you to see it for yourself, how these numbers actually create a pattern. All right. 
All right, so uh, that's, uh, so now um, we have, uh, maybe I should, uh, I should uh, delete this and let you guys try it out yourself. So we have a simple assignment. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, so basically uh, I want you to uh, create a list of countries you can you can call your country any 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 name you can even uh, 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 create fictitious countries it's up to you uh, usually country names end off with an a uh, i don't know whether like america uh, like you know india all end off with an a so uh, whatever country you pick up there will be some country with an a so i just want you to create a list create a for loop create a condition and then sort it you know uh, if you don't know, uh, you can always uh, uh, search on Google. Okay, there's a sort function. Uh, and then, um, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, and, and I will go through this uh, uh, exercise in the next class. Okay, and so that uh, you can have time to, to uh, search the internet and do some research and, and uh, try it out uh, yourself. Okay. All right, so that's basically uh, for today. I hope I didn't go too fast. So I just want to uh, keep it open for you guys to ask any questions uh, of uh, anything that may have uh, not, uh, not been uh, easy, all right? You can type your questions in the chat box uh, and I will try to, uh, I don't mind explaining those, those things again. I mean, the, those items again, just let me know what is it that needs clarification. I think, uh, Sio Maru, you're muted. Can you hear me? Ah, uh, yeah, now I can hear you. Okay, sorry. Uh, so it's open for questions. So anyone has any questions? Or would you all want to put it in the chat box? Oh my God, is it like so difficult that you guys are uh, stumped for questions? Or well, they actually understood everything. 
Yeah, if you did understand everything, uh, could you show us how the function is used, please? Okay, which uh, function? Oh, what is that? Oh, okay, okay, okay. You see, uh, uh, that, okay, if, if you can see my screen, I'm going to share my screen now. There are little jewels in the code uh, when you see the code uh, and try to go line by line, which you should, right? Um, okay, can you see my screen? So this is actually uh, indicating that there is a variable associated to it. So you can see format, right, is uh, putting a space plus string k, which is uh, converting k, which is an integer, into a, a string value, which is point, which is two, right? So you have one, two, and three, four. So you can see it's printing the header line. So, and then I am giving um, a, a, a formatting of uh, thirteen spaces between this number and this number. Of course, I did it like trial and error. I didn't like. Uh, know this before. I just had to do 10, 9, 8, then try 11 and 14 and whatever. And then I realized that, oh, 13, it's behaving correctly. So it's this far. So there are 13 characters here to keep it because you can see that as I go down, I'm using tab, right? So the same thing is saying that you can see here, I am using format ijk, ij, i times j. So I and J is actually the for loop. One is going from one to 12. J is going from one to 12. So in one line, I have I, which is one, which is always one from the first loop. And J is the second number. So as you can see that one, two, three, four is actually J. So I'm plotting, uh, I'm printing to the line uh, with two spaces. That means I, I, I replace this with J and I have two empty spaces after that because I want the digits to align itself like this because there are two digits, right? So if you want to uh, go up to like 100 or whatever, you may have to increase the number of spaces so that it aligns itself well. So what happens is it puts the number in the second spot, right? And if it takes up two spots, then it'll be nicely aligned like this. So you can see that the numbers align themselves, right? Even though there are two digits, so if you go to the bigger ones, you can see that they align themselves accordingly. And to get this alignment is why I put the digits, right? And you can see the third, the answer, I put three because some of it have three digits. So I want to align it to the third digit, right? So in order for me to get the spacing correct, I needed to use these uh, numbers. I hope that makes sense. So there is another way, uh, instead of putting, uh, uh, what is that uh, format, we can actually use F string. So the format is actually replacing the curly braces with these values. And then I'm adding a tab after that. So that's where the comma comes in, followed by the tab, followed by the next, next string, okay? So to make an accurate solution for a problem, we need to accurate equation. May I know how to make an equation if we have a set of data? Like uh, we, uh, we are like, are there any modules? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, it's uh, uh, you, you, basically this is what machine learning doing. Okay. Machine learning, what it does is, it takes all the data points and tries to find an equation to solve that problem. Okay. Does that explain? Uh, so, so, so the, so the, uh, uh, the simple answer is uh, just hang on uh, because that is where we are going. We are going to solve machine learning. We're going to learn how a machine solves a problem. That means uh, uh, I give it all these data points. All right. I give it all these data points and then it'll come up with an equation and say, hey, this is the equation for all these data points. You know, um, 
For example, we're going to start slow. We're going to start slow. We're going to do a straight line first. That's called a linear regression. We're going to do a linear regression on a bunch of data points. That means we do a scatter plot and then we try to do a linear regression line to try to describe the best fit line. Uh, what I mean by linear regression, let me just check. Um, Yeah, so this is what I call as a linear regression. That means we're gonna uh, we're going to uh, we're gonna have a bunch of data points. Okay, you can see that this is quite random. Uh, it's got a lot of noise. It's it's the 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 line is only touching probably like maybe ten percent of the numbers. So so immediately this is what statistics has been doing for the longest time. They use regression to try and solve the world, right? Um, uh, uh, so, so what we do is we take, uh, uh, we do linear regression to, of all these points and we find the best fit line. So this is a very uh, linear uh, problem. Okay, you can see that this line is probably wrong, right? But it's very close to the actual value. So that is basically statistics, right? Machine learning goes a bit further and tries to kind of like, you know, draw one line that is like going to try to fit everything as much as possible. And then we will use statistics to see how well it predicted, how badly it predicted, and all that stuff we will come into. So that's when we actually uh, try to make sense of the real world using nonlinear. So you can see that this one is much better than, than, than this, this. I mean, these are different data points, but this is just one uh, the, where the x is to the power of two. So we can go x to the power of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And, and, and even um, make uh, even more better assumptions, right? So that is why I'm slowly bringing these concepts into it because you always wanted to know, right, why we learn maths, why we learn maths. Now, this is exactly why we learn maths because it allows us to understand the real world. We can predict the real world or we can forecast the real world uh, based on past data to a certain extent. You're most probably wrong, but very close to the truth. All right, that's the whole idea of, of uh, machine learning has actually take it, taken it a step further than statistics, okay? Statistics after a while, it, it cannot process uh, all that information. So machine learning is able to process it and learn more, all right? So we're going to learn, uh, in machine learning, we're gonna do linear regression, and then we're gonna use uh, logistic regression for a different sort of a problem. That means if you wanna detect a cat or not cat, so that one we would use uh, 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 where, where I can uh, differentiate between uh, one another, I use a different sort of a regression method. Okay. Okay. What does uh, NP arrange do? Okay. NP arrange is actually creating an array uh, of values. So I've used that here, I think, in the here. Sorry, in the plot. Yeah. So it's it's a uh, it's a uh, so you can actually uh, uh, you can just type code and hit X and then you can run it and it will show you what uh, um, uh, what uh, uh, what it is. It's basically an array of values. Okay. It's just like uh, the you see like every point here, every uh, green triangle is actually. Uh, has got an X value and a Y value. So, so we are trying to uh, create an array of uh, values from negative 4.8 to negative uh, to positive 4.8 with a small difference of 0 0.2. So it takes like, it starts off at 4.8, then 4.6, negative 4.6, negative 4.4 until 4.8. So you can see it is actually created an array similar to um, a range. Okay, so here I have included uh, this package called NumPy. Okay, NumPy is uh, uh, a very, very useful package to understand. And somebody had said that they, they use Pandas before. Pandas is another package and Pandas is actually built on top of NumPy. NumPy is still very crude. Uh, Pandas is a lot more powerful. It creates a data frame. So we will play with that in the, uh, in the fifth class, where we do data handling, we will play with pandas. 
uh, we, we will jump uh, out of NumPy and go into Pandas, all right? Because uh, Pandas is easier. And then if you're doing machine learning and when you are doing a lot of computing, you need to be very mindful of what sort of method you use. So uh, of course, if you're computing, uh, computing large amounts of values, it's important to use the right uh, method. So I would always recommend use NumPy uh, if possible. If not possible, uh, you can use uh, data frame, I mean, uh, pandas, all right? So these are, uh, this is uh, this is how uh, we actually create arrays. So you can also use range. You can also use NumPy. They all repeat themselves. You know, there are many ways to skin the cat. You don't have to, to, to be limited to, to just one way, all right? Now, here, what is important is that it's scientific numbers, okay? <clears throat> so one of the advantages of computing is that it handles uh, everything as a scientific number. So a scientific number is actually called a float value. You know, you have integers, then you have floats, right? A float is actually a, a binary version of a, of a very large value and, and it's stored as a float value, all right? So this is where the, the one divided by three, uh, one over three plus one over three plus one over three is gonna give you. 0 0.9999999999 until whatever, because this is how the computer thinks. So we wanted to create uh, this um, uh, array. So we use uh, uh, NumPy, uh, NumPy arrange to uh, NumPy A range to create the array. All right, so that's what it does. So the biggest takeaway from today's class is try to understand the patterns. You know, it's not always very obvious, but once you see the pattern, you will never forget it. Okay, and uh, and when you see a pattern or an algorithm, it is applicable to the entire number system. We are not just limited to one to twelve. All right. So that is the advantage of looking at numbers in terms of pattern. And one of the ways to see the pattern is to plot it. When you plot it, you can actually see the pattern and how it repeats itself. I hope today's class was easy to understand because we are going through a process of mind flipping. Okay, so my job is to flip your mind each time, right? The moment you think that uh, you you fixated on one particular idea. My job is to flip your mind and to make it uh, uh, a bit more uh, involved in terms of uh, how you actually understood it initially. All right. So I hope I managed to do that. There will be a few mind flips uh, happening in the coming classes. Forget flip, it's exploded. Oh, okay. I hope you are still intact because you have to come back for class next week. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, I, I, I think that in school they don't uh, emphasize enough on, on um, learning uh, with uh, patterns. They, they, they try to drill you to, to memorize and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, it, it, it is not that memorizing is wrong. It's just that you won't see the bigger picture if you memorize, that's the problem. So if you understand that there is a pattern and it's, there is a sequence, you are playing with entire number system as a, as a whole. You know, you're not, you're not picking uh, one to 10 or one to 12 or whatever. You're, you're, you're handling the whole number system as one. So whenever you see that pattern, whenever you see a parabolic curve like this, you know now it's a non-linear curve, it's an X square, or it's a cube, or it's a to the four or to the five. And this is this is as uh, where are we going with this? Is to understand the real world using machine learning and uh, um, uh, the the techniques in in machine learning. So in order to understand machine learning, we need to understand what are these. Uh, mathematical uh, equations are doing. What, what, is a, what is a second order differential equation? Like for example, right here with the assignment I'm giving you here. 
4x squared minus 12x minus 10. What is it? What is it solving? You know, when I say there's a solution for this, what is it? So that we will talk about in the next class, which is algebra. So in algebra, in, in, we have to thank uh, whoever created algebra because algebra is, is so wide, it's, it's extensive, okay? You got quadratic equations there, you got second order differential equations, you got so many things that you got matrices, you got uh, so many things that comes into algebra, but I'll try to, to condense it and keep it focused because uh, we're gonna, we, once you understand that, that, that algebra is used to, 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 uh, uh, to understand the real world, you can see that you can have an equation that is 150,000 to the power of, to the power of 150,000 with ease. You know, that is why we learn patterns. We don't want to be limited by two power, two power, three. Last time doing power of six is a wow, so good. Huh? Now it doesn't matter because power six is nothing, you know, uh, because uh, each power is actually a degree of variable. That means, let's say you got a car and you wanted to find out what could go wrong with the car. There are 20,000 things that could go wrong with the car. So that means there's, it's the power of 20,000. So in order for us to solve that problem, we need to have an equation with 20, to the power of 20,000. So you can see how when you, when you go into much uh, bigger uh, problems, right? Like in machine learning and all that, the variables run into the millions. A general question, does a programmer really remember the format encoding, for example, the color coding, the plot shapes, etc. Okay, you see, programming is problem solving. The code is just a matter of syntax. As long as you know that you can do this, just go to Google and ask Google how to write the code. Because tomorrow, there'll be another language called Ula Sawa, you know? And you cannot keep fixating on the language and the syntax because it's just a matter of getting the job done. You know, I have learned over 30 over languages. I can code in Java, C, C++, Python, Delphi, God, God only knows. But I never, never remember syntax. I never remember syntax. I have, I'm blind to syntax. It's either I know it or I go and search for it. So I never focus on the syntax. I just focus on what I want to do, how I want to do it. It doesn't matter what language for me because we need to be agnostic towards language, all right? And uh, really, if all you need to do is uh, do a uh, map plot library, right? Hit enter, you go to the map plot library org, click that, then you will see they'll give you a bunch of examples of how to use the map plot library because it's open source. They want you to use it. There's a lot of documentation available. They even have a tab called documentation. Click on that, choose how to install. Then uh, now, later on, I will step you through to kind of figure out how to uh, read these documentations, okay? So, um, so basically, uh, I, to answer your question, no, I don't remember that uh, syntax simply because there's just too much, okay? And there are PDF documents uh, PDF documents to, to help you. So always think that you are a problem solver, all right? You're here to solve a problem, not to learn a particular language. You're here to do something. That's why I need to go to the next phase, which is an assignment, okay? I will be assigning you with a project. Each one of you will have a unique project and the code is already available on the internet. It's nothing new. There was this very kind gentleman called Amar Khan he has generated 100 over pro simple projects that's uh, within like uh, 10 lines of code, all right? I will be sharing that content with you. First, I have to ask him for permission, then I will share it with you. It's a, if you search the web, you can find the website, you can find the solution. But if you are, if even that is too difficult, uh, one week later after your assignment has been given, I will send you the link to the actual solution, all right? But I want you to form groups and, and discuss and, and help each other, okay? Because the, the group is too large for me to be handling uh, everyone. So I want uh, those who know to take the, take the time off and try to help um, as many as you can. So I will recommend um, a, a group member 
with their email address. So you can shoot out any questions to them. And if they have any questions, they can shoot it out to you and form a group because peer learning is also very, very important. Uh, it's a very nice way of justifying what you know is what you know. And, and always when you want to teach someone, when you teach someone, you actually reinforce yourself in terms of how you understood it, all right? So, so it's always good to, to get into that practice. So always, whenever you learn something, think of it as you learning it to teach it to someone else. That way, um, you know, it's helpful. 